वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल श्वेता सी वी ई एन वी सो वी आर गोन स्टडी रिगार्डिंग एयर पोल्यूशन मॉनिटरिंग एंड कंट्रोल चैप्टर थ्री कंट्रोल इक्विपमेंट्स बाई स्टार्टिंग द चैप्टर वी नीड टू नो वॉट आर द फैक्टर्स विच आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर सेलेक्टिंग द कंट्रोल इक्विपमेंट्स सो बेसिकली it has four forms one is the operational functions of the control needs of control task informational needs of operator space and layout requirements so in case of operational functions of the control the aim and importance of the control the features of the control machine the nature of controlling actions required and the time of control has to be specified in case of needs of control task force required or the requirement speed and accuracy of the movement and the interdependence of all these factors are to be specified in case of informational needs of operator the whole range of operators information requirements such as identification location and position of control settings etc have to be determined in case of space and layout requirements they have to determine and decide the physical designs of the controls in case of general features or the factors for selecting a control equipment will be the characteristics of the force speed accuracy and control functions should be taken into consideration while selecting the controls continuous controls should be selected for making precise adjustment decorate controls should not be really not be adopted for more than 24 settings in case of third controls should make use of each body member depending upon the physical capability limitation of each member easily identifiable controls should be utilized linear controls are used for a small range and rotational controls are used for larger range related controls should be combined before selecting any kind of control equipments or any kind of machines we need to know the characteristics or the features of that particular machine and it has to be considered as main priority okay the discrete and continuous controls should be used as per specific requirement and continuous control should not be utilized where has a discrete control can serve the purpose thank you so these were the factors responsible for choosing the control equipments so next we check out the major gaseous pollutants like volatile organic compounds and other gaseous air toxics that are controlled by means of three ba- basic techniques that is the absorption method adsorption method incineration or the combustion method these techniques were employed either singly or in a combination and they are effective against major greenhouse gases along with that uh, another technique is recently been developing which is known as carbon sequestration this is uh, or this aims in controlling of carbon dioxide levels okay so if we come in terms of absorption what does it deal so absorption involves in the transfer of a gaseous pollutant from the air into a contacting liquid such as water the liquid must be able either to serve as a solvent for the pollutant or to capture it by means of a chemical reaction example wet scrubber and pack scrubbers in case of wet scrubbers and pack scrubbers a brief concept is highlighted here let's see wet scrubbers are similar to the absorption for controlling suspended particulates later they can be used for gas absorption gas absorption can also be carried out in packed scrubbers or the towers in which in which the liquid is present on a wetted surface rather than has droplets suspended in the air a common type of packed scrubbers in the so a common type of pipe scrubber is counter current tower after entering the bottom of the tower after that particular a okay the polluted air stream flows upward 
through a wetted column of light chemically inactive packing materials liquid absorbents flows downward and is uniformly spread throughout the column packing thereby increasing the total area of contact between gas and liquid thermoplastic materials which are more widely used has packing for counter current scrubber towers these devices usually have gas removal efficiency up to 90 to 95 percent co current and cross flow packed scrubber designs are also used for gas absorption in the co current designs both the gas and liquid flow in the same direction vertically downward through the scrubber although not as efficient as counter current designs co current devices can work at higher liquid flow rates so next point what it says is increased flow prevents plugging of the packing when the air stream contains high levels of particulates co current designs offered lower resistance to the air flow and allows the cross sectional area of the tower to be reduced the cross flow designs in which gas flows horizontally through the packing and liquid flows vertically downward can operate with lower air flow resistance when high particulate levels are present In general these scrubbers are used at fertilizer production facilities to remove ammonia from the air stream at glass production plants to remove hydrogen fluoride at chemical plants to remove water soluble solvents such as acetone and methyl alcohol as well as at the rendering plants to control odor So we are going to discuss regarding flue gas desulfurization Okay here sulfur dioxide in the flue gas from fossil fuel power plants can be controlled by means of an absorption process called as flue gas desulfurization known as FGD so these FGD systems involves wet scrubbing and dry scrubbing in wet FGD systems flue gases are brought in contact with an absorbent which can be either a liquid or a slurry or solid materials the sulfur dioxide dissolves in or it reacts with the absorbent and becomes trapped in it in the dry fgd systems absorbent is dry pulverized lime or the limestone once absorption occurs the solid particles are removed by means of bighaus filters bighaus filters pictorial representations i have already specified in terms of our previous chapters of air pollution monitoring and control of pollution so you people can refer to it dry fgd systems compared with wet systems offer cost and energy savings and easier operation but they require higher chemical consumption and are limited to flue gas derived from the combustion of sulfur that is low sulfur coal so here we are having a pictorial representation of uh, absorption and adsorption here absorption refers to the man eating the cake adsorption ref- represents to the cake eating man so it's like uh, the cake creams have to be stuck on his face so it's like on surface it will hold the pollutants and in case of absorption it captures it in it we can say okay okay in case of wet scrubbers you can check out the drawing okay see we are having exhaust gas in okay at the downwards waste water out oil suit excess absorbent solution and here absorbent solution in and uh, outlet called scrubbed exhaust gas out so this is how it is going to work when the uh, contaminated air flows into it then the absorbents flow downwards and air is passing upward they get clogged in it and they will be sent downwards due to gravitational forces and thereby it gets like treated there often and the clear water will be further um utilized for some like we can say for gardening and all etc purposes and the pure air will be sent out directly to the atmosphere okay so what about this particular fgd so mechanism of fgd here downwards fgd gypsum is there 
upper mean towards upward oxidizing gas and limestone there are stirrers bottom fraction circulation pump and there above flue gas is inleted we are having a spray tower calciferous wash suspension coal ascensor and the clean gas out this is how fgd is going to work in that we are going to see in further now in terms of pad scrubbers see the contaminated air is blown with the help of system blower to it and we are having a ph control metering some ph probe which identifies whether it is acidic or base and ph control metering nutrient addition sludge discharge recirculation pump and blow down and the packed members if people can see it it's just like a honeycomb structure the packing spray heads avoid has the moisture eliminator avoid we are having cleaned air to atmosphere or exhaust system so this is how a pack scrubber works on when it comes to four technique called as carbon sequestration you can see co2 is driven enhanced oil recovery system so co2 will be enhanced from an oil recovery system as well as co2 is injected into deep saline formation k proc stored co2 produced oil shale k proc sand storage unit carbon dioxide native ground water carbon bearing mineral mineral formation creeping of separate droplets co2 dissolving into the water physical contaminant under k proc so just have the look on the drawing we will discuss in that in terms of further slides okay okay so we were discussing regarding the fgd systems right so let's continue with it so fgd systems are also classified as either regenerable or non regenerable depending on whether the sulfur that is removed from the flue gas is recovered or discarded in the united states most system is operation or in the united states most systems in operation are non regenerable because of their lower capital and operating cost by contrast in japan regenerable systems are used extensively and in germany they are required by law non regenerable fgd systems produce a sulfur containing sludge residue that requires appropriate disposal regenerable fgd systems require additional steps to convert the sulfur dioxide into useful by product like sulfuric acid now the major thing comes right now so several fgd methods exist differing mainly in the chemicals used in the process okay so how fgd processes okay we need to see here before that it employs either the lime or limestone slurries has the reactants and they are widely utilized or applied we can say so in the limestone scrubbing process sulfur dioxide reacts with the limestone known as calcium carbonate particles in the slurry forming calcium sulfide and carbon dioxide okay these all are interesting topics you need to concentrate in the lime scrubbing process sulfur dioxide reacts with slaked lime that is calcium hydroxide forming calcium sulfide and water depending on sulfur dioxide concentration and oxidation conditions the calcium sulfate can continue to react with water forming calcium sulfate known as gypsum neither calcium sulfide nor calcium sulfate is very soluble in the water both can be precipitated out as a slurry by gravity settling the thick slurry called fgd sludge creates a significant disposal problem flue gas desulfurization is to reduce ambient sulfur dioxide levels and mitigate the problem of acid drain nevertheless in addition to its expense which is passed on directly to the consumer has high higher rates for electricity millions of tons of fgd sludge are generated each year so to treat it becomes a big task so what do you mean by adsorption now 
so gas adsorption has contrasted with absorption here the surface it is a surface phenomenon the gas molecules are absorbed or attracted to and held on the surface of the solid gas adsorption methods are used for odor control at various types of chemical manufacturing and food processing facilities in the recovery of a number of volatile solvents example benzene and in the control of volatile organic compounds at industrial facilities okay activated carbon known as heated charcoal is one of the most common adsorbent material it is a very porous and has extremely high ratio of surface area to volume Activated carbon is particularly useful as an adsorbent for cleaning air stream that contains volatile organic compounds and as well as for the solvent recovery and odor control. A properly designed carbon adsorption unit can remove gas with an efficiency exceeding 95%. Adsorption systems are configured either as stationary bed adsorber, the polluted air stream enters from the top, passes through a layer or the bed of activated carbon and exits at the bottom. Okay, so people got the page. Okay. Hmm. In the moving bed adsorbers, the activated carbon moves slowly down through channels by gravity has the air to be cleaned passes through in a cross flow current so this is how adsorption usually works okay in terms of incineration the process called incineration or combustion chemically rapid oxidation can be used to convert volatile organic compounds and other gaseous hydrocarbon pollutants to carbon dioxide and water Incineration of volatile organic compounds and hydrocarbon fumes usually is accomplished in a special incinerator called as afterburner. Okay. To achieve complete combustion, the afterburner must provide the proper amount of turbulence and burning time. It must maintain a uh, yeah, it must maintain sufficiently high temperatures. Sufficient turbulence or mixing is a key factor in combustion because it reduces the required burning time and temperature. A process called direct flame incineration can be used when the waste gas is itself a combustible mixture and does not need the addition of air or the fuel. I am just reading it out for you all guys so that you people can also make the points as well as you are getting that idea also how exactly it is going to work, right? An afterburner typically is made of a steel shell lined with refractory materials such as fire brick. The refractory lining protects the shell and serves as a thermal insulator. By giving enough time and high enough temperatures, gaseous organic pollutants can be almost completely oxidized with incineration efficiency approaching to 100%. Certain substances such as platinum can act in a manner that assists the combustion reaction. These substances are called as catalysts, which are helping in the combustion. Okay, They allow in the complete oxidation of the combustible gases at relatively low temperatures. After burners are used to control odors, destroy the toxic compounds or to reduce the amount of photochemically reactive substance released into the air. They are also employed at a variety of industrial facilities where volatile organic compound vapors are emitted from combustion process or the solvent evaporation. Example of industries are petroleum refineries, paint drying facilities as well as the paper mills. Okay, so this is the four technique what we call the carbon sequestration. We have a brief thing. The best ways to reduce the levels of CO2 in the air is to use energy more efficiently and to reduce the combustion of fossil fuels by using alternative energy sources, example nuclear, wind, tidal and solar power. In addition, the carbon sequestration can be used to serve the purpose. Carbon sequestration involves the long-term storage of carbon dioxide underground as well as on the surface of earth in forest and ocean relies on natural processes such as forest growth. 
However, the clearing of forests for agriculture and other purposes, and also the pollution of oceans, diminishes the natural carbon sequestration. Storing CO2, that is carbon dioxide underground, a technology under development that is also called as geo sequestration or carbon capture and storage, would involve pumping the gas directly into the underground geologic reservoir layers. This would require the separation of carbon dioxide from power plant, flue gases, or some other source, and it is a costly process. Okay, so people got to know, and it is usually naturally present by nature only. It is going to adopt. Uh, best example I can give you that is uh, the tree gives us oxygen by taking our CO twos. At the same time, at the night time, what it is going to do? It will also release some of the CO twos out, right? So it is like a uh, recycling process. We can say so nature only has it. So we are only under developing in a technical manner. So this is how the control equipments are well used in terms of protecting our atmosphere, and basically the other cyclone scrubbers or ESPs etc. I have also always I mean I have already explained it in detail or in concept wise in terms of our previous videos. Please do check there, okay? And please do let me know how you like this particular chapter and how you felt like whether you understood the concept or not. In an easier manner, I have I tried to explain it in the common words. I have made the points and I had uh, exhibited it. So, yeah, if you have any kind of doubts and all, do let me know either by following me on Instagram at the rate I'm Shweta Shwe, or on my Facebook page Shweta C V E N V. As well as you people can do also a favor for me by liking, by sharing. As well as commenting and subscribing to my channel, which is the main, and by hitting the bell icon to know further details whenever I upload a new chapter.